Right. Uh, welcome to the second lesson, uh, second part of the 11th lesson. We'll continue looking at circles. Uh, let's see first what arcs are. Arcs. So on a circle, if I pick two points on the edge of the circle, so let's say point A, point B, then the, the part of the circumference that's from A to B, this circular path, is known as an arc. Okay, so simply is that any any particular region on the edge of the circle is known as an arc. Um, now the way you refer to an arc is that you can't simply say arc A B, right? Because that's confusing. Do you mean from A to B from here, or do you mean if I go from A this way counterclockwise and come to B like this? Do you mean this? big arc, the longer arc, or the shorter one, right? So that's confusing. So the way you refer to an arc is via three points. So this is not appropriate. You put another point here, Oops. let's say it's point C, and you say arc A, C, B. Now it's very clear that you, are, you want this arc which is going to point C, right? Now if you want the longer arc, what you would do is put a point here, and you will say arc A, D, B. So this is how GRE would always refer arcs, okay? Always with three points, All right? Now, on an arc, if you draw the radii from the end points of an arc, okay, so from A to the center of the circle, I'm making one radius and this other radius from B to the center of the circle, then the angle that's formed, okay, this angle, let's say it's x degrees, this is known as the central angle, okay, central angle, central angle. So this is simply the angle formed by the arc, okay, central angle. Um, let, okay, so the central angle is important in a few calculations. So let's first see how we can find length of an arc. Length of an arc. Right. This is simply given as you take your central angle, whatever x degrees that is, divided by 360. Okay, so 360 is the full revolution around the circle, right? If you go, if you have an arc, if you have the circumference, basically that's 360, right? So when you do this ratio x over 360, you're finding the fraction of the circle that's covered by the arc. Okay. And then the since the length of the arc, you multiply this fraction by circumference. Okay, so circumference goes all around the circle, but your arc only goes partially around the circle. So you find the partial ratio and multiply it by the circumference, 2 pi r, and you get the length of an arc. Simple as that. So let's suppose your um, your central angle is 60 degrees and your radius is 5. So the length of the arc is simply 60 over 360 times 2 pi r is 5. So put a 5 here, okay? So you simplify this, and what you end up with this is 5 pi over 3, okay? All right, the second concept, um, the second formula that comes from the central angle is the sector area. So what's meant by sector area? So if you have an arc like this, right, and you want to find the area of the sector that's represented or that's sketched out by this arc. So you want this area, okay? Again, you write the ratio of your central angle to 360. So your central angle, this is a constant thing, right? You're always finding the fraction that's been kind of sketched out by your arc. And now since it's the area, instead of the circumference, you want the area of the circle, okay? So both of these formulas are very important. Um, you most likely see at least one problem that uses these formulas, okay? And, and they can come in many different parts. That sometimes the data sufficiency questions would have um, application of these formulas too, okay? All right, so let's do some problems. All 
right, so here's the problem that I made myself. So we have a circle, O is the center of the circle, all right. We have, the radius of the circle is two. We want to find the area of this shaded region. Okay, so you have a triangle, um, but the triangle is not inscribed in the circle. So you have this extra part lying around and you want to find the area of that region. Okay, so I know this is given to be 30 degrees. <clears throat> So since the right triangle, this is 90 degrees, this angle would be 60 degrees, okay? So now this 60 degree <clears throat> is the central angle for this whole region, right? This, if I overwrite it, is this region bounded by these two sides and the arc over here, right? So this region's central angle is 60 degrees. So if I want to find the area of the shaded region, what I can do is I can find the area of the central angle, area, the sector area. So let me write it this way. Sector area that corresponds to 60 degrees, right? And take out the area of the triangle. Okay, so that will, this subtraction will give me the area of the shaded region. Now, area of the sector is relatively easy to find. You know the central angle, so you need the ratio of the central angle to 360, and you need to time that with the area of the circle, which is pi r squared. r is 2 here, so 2 squared. Okay, so that gives me the area of the triangle. Now, area of the, the sector. Now, area of the triangle is 1 half base times height, and in this case, it's a right triangle. I need to know uh, the length of the two segments of the uh, of the right triangle, uh, two, two legs, so, so this leg and this leg, right? Now, let me draw a triangle here. So here's the triangle. This is 30, this is 90, this is 60, and I know the hypotenuse, the longest side here is two, right? So this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle with the side opposite to 90 being 2, right? So we know in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, uh, if side opposite to 90 is 2, then side opposite to 30 is half of that, so it would be 1. And the side opposite to 60 would be root 3 times side opposite 30, okay? Again, these ratios come from our previous lessons. Make sure you know how to calculate this for a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So you have, um, Opposite 30, you have 1, and you have root 3, okay? So now you know the length of the two legs of this triangle, which basically go in the area formula, okay? Right, quick simplification, 0 goes 0. I get 6 times 1, 6 times 6. Uh, on the numerator, I'll get 2 squared, 4, 4 pi over 6, minus, this would give me root 3 over 2. So if I simplify this a bit, I'll have 2 pi, over 3 minus root 3 over 2. Okay. All right. Um, not too bad. Uh, a bit of calculation, but overall the concepts were pretty um, simple and straightforward. All right. Let's look at another question. So here we have a circle, and A is the center of the circle. Um, we need to find, okay, it's a quantitative comparison question. Quantity A is the perimeter of triangle ABC. So triangle ABC is perimeter. Perimeter. Uh, quantity B is the perimeter of the shaded region. So this shaded region. Okay. Uh, so perimeter is the sum of all the lengths. So if we look at triangle ABC, we are looking at the sum of this and this. So this is just the radii. So you have the two radii. Let me write that down. And then you have this longer line BC. Now for the region, the shaded region, um, you have the line the same. So the BC, this line, is common in both regions, BC. And then you have, for for the shaded region, you have this arc BDC, right? So I'll say arc BDC. I need to know the length of that, right? Now since BC is common in both, I'm just going to take get rid of BC. So on the, in quantity A, I'm just left with 2R, and here I have arc BDC. Now, arc BDC, I know its central angle is 120 degrees. So if I do 120 over 360 times 
2 pi r, the circumference, right? What do I get? 0, 0, 12 over, this will give me 1 and 3. So I get 2 pi over 3 r, okay? And here I have 2 r. So I can find what this uh, 2 pi over 3 on the calculator comes out to be. So let's quickly do that. 2 times 3.14 divided by 3 gives me 2.09 r. 2.09 r. So I'm comparing 2.09 r with 2 r. This is slightly bigger. So the answer is here is b. Okay. All right. Quickly, one more. Let me zoom out here. Okay, so we have a circular lawn with a radius of 5 meters is surrounded by a circular walkway that is 4 meters wide. Okay, so you have a lawn of radius 5 meters. So here's your lawn. Let's change the color. And then you have a circular pathway which is here. And the pathway is 4 meters wide. Okay, what is the area of the walkway? So you want to find the area of this part. Okay, so, so we have this bigger region, right? And you have we have this smaller circle inside. So area of the walkway would be equal to area of the big circle, right? So so let's use the area of the big circle minus area of the small circle. Okay. Uh, so area of the circle will be pi r square. Um, minus pi r square, so this is the big one, big area, this is the small area. So what is the big area? So I know the width of the walkway is 4, the small area is 5. So if I draw a line like this, right, then this is 4, this is 5, so the area of this big circle is 5 and 4, 9. So 9 squared minus the area of the small circle would be 5 times the radius of the small circle is 5 squared. So we'll have basically 9 squared would give me 81 pi minus 5 squared would give me 25 pi. And 81 minus 25 would give me 56 pi. Okay, so the area of the walkway would be 56 pi. Right? Uh, circles like these which have a common center. So, so see, the small circle has the same center and the bigger circle also has the same center. These circles, GRE likes to call them concentric, concentric circles, okay? Uh, concentric basically means they have the same center, okay? So when, when you have circles like these, uh, the radii are interrelated, just like over here, the small, the bigger radii was equal to small radii plus this this additional part right okay so that finishes our uh, circle lecture thank you